AI today feels like magic. When I type something into ChatGPT and get a response, I'm amazed, left wondering how this is possible. I hate magic. It's the reason I decided to study programming in the first place. I struggle and still do to this day to peel apart the stage curtain and reveal the magician's trick. How do AI systems work? What makes them tick? What makes them so successful? Like all things, in order to understand them, we must climb down the layer of abstractions and arrive at the foundations. For machine learning, it's the neural network. At the end of this video, you will understand how to program your very own neural networks in Rust to solve problems. And also a bit about the mathematical foundations of how it all works. Remember, these videos are just me documenting the learning process and narrating it to you. However, if you want to get started learning AI and want to understand the basics, then this video is definitely for you. First of all, let's get a mental model of what a neural network is. Imagine the following. There's a factory responsible for producing solid metal spheres. The factory orders metal cubes of a certain size and places them into their special cutting machine, which outputs solid metal spheres. The workers place the cubes onto an assembly line and off it goes into the machine. The whole factory loves these cutting machines, but they start to become old and rusted. The factory owner calls the company and they send you, the lead engineer, out to fix the machines. You first place a cube into the machine to ascertain the state of the gears. The end result is a half cube, half sphere shape. Now the engineer realizes something. Every layer of gears is dependent upon the layer before it. By tracing the gears, we can see exactly how each chain of gears affects the output of our machine. The engineer tweaks some gears in the chain he can see that are the most responsible for the incorrect output and turns on the machine to try with another cube. Success! He realizes that the new shape is closer to a sphere, but he's still off. He continues to repeat the following steps. Forward propagation, pushing the cube through the machine. Cost function, where he calculates how close the output is to a perfect sphere. And finally, back propagation, where he goes back into the gears and updates them. This machine, as you may have guessed by now, is a neural network. Let's zoom in on just one of these circles. It's called a neuron, meant to loosely mirror how the brain works. Let's take a look at a two-input neuron. Three things are happening here. First, each of our inputs is multiplied by its appropriate weight. A weight is something that determines the strength or importance of each input signal. Next, all the weighted inputs are added together with a bias. Finally, this now weighted sum is passed through an activation function. The reason we use an activation function is to make the neuron nonlinear. Think about it, if there was no activation function, then the entire neural network would be simplified into a series of linear functions, and we would never be able to fit any complex data. That's all fine and well for a two-input neuron, but imagine there were hundreds or even thousands of weights and inputs to a single neuron. How do we solve this? That's where matrices come in. If we place all the inputs into a matrix and all the weights into another, we can just multiply them together and add them to a vector of biases. Then we take our results and pass them into our activation function. Enough talk, let's code it up. First of all, let's create a data structure for our matrix. And here we're creating the fields rows, columns, and data, which is gonna hold a vector of our matrix elements. The reason why we're doing it like this is because it's more efficient to have a single vector and access it through some multiplication of rows and columns than to have two vectors and access it that way. This is a function to generate random matrices. We use it to create matrices in the beginning that we can then use to fine tune our neural network. This is our addition function, which we're gonna to use to add two different matrices. And next we've got our subtract. Well, you know what that one does. And finally, we've got our dot product. It's used to multiply each input by its corresponding weight. Here we take the corresponding element from each matrix, add them together, and then place them into a result matrix. I've also added a matrix macro for testing so you guys can see it a bit better. You don't have to add this, it's just optional. So here we've got a test for what we've created so far for our feed forward. Here we're setting up some example input weights and biases, and we're gonna check if they work with our weighted sum. At this point, we've passed all our tests. What we've done here is we've basically created our own linear algebra library. How cool is that? Is this a dog or a cat? Each individual pixel gets split up into neurons in our input layer. They then flow into our hidden layers where they're transformed by some combination of weights and biases using our forward feed function. Finally, the output is either a dog or a cat in our final layer. 
Now that it's all out of the way, let's program our neural network. This is our network data structure. The layers are represented as a vector of the amount of neurons per layer. Weights, biases, and inputs are stored as a vector of type matrix. And finally, we've got our activation function and learning rate. Let's add a function to initialize our network. This is so that we can have a random network generated at the beginning and then fine tune it to our needs. First, we create empty vectors to hold our weights and biases. Next, we iterate over all layers in our neural network. We utilize our random function to create matrices of the following dimensions, where the rows represent the amount of neurons in the next layer. Finally, we initialize our neural network. Okay, cool. So now that we've created our neural network, let's try to implement a feed forward function. Just a quick refresher, feed forward was the process of computing an output or a prediction from the input data by propagating it forward through the network layers. Firstly, we create a variable called current that holds the inputs to the next layer of our neural network. Next, we iterate over all layers in our neural network. Then we apply the feed forward algorithm. Multiply the weights and inputs, add them to the biases, and then map our activation function. Finally, we just return our variable current, which at this point holds the output to our network. Okay, well that wasn't so bad, right? But just wait until you hear about backpropagation. <laughs> Remember that backpropagation consisted of a cost function? where we compared our outputs to our target outputs. Then we compute which part of our neural network is most responsible for its current output. And finally, we update those and try it all over again. Here we have our backpropagate function. The inputs represent the output of our feed forward function. The targets represent the expected output of our neural network. Firstly, we calculate our cost, meaning how off our input was from the expected output. The whole point of our neural network learning is to minimize the cost function to as little as possible. Next, we search for which parts of our network were most responsible for producing this incorrect output. We iterate layer by layer, multiplying our activation function by its derivative to access the weights and biases. Then we will multiply them by our error to update our neurons proportionally. The higher the gradient, the more responsible that particular neuron is to producing the output. So the more wrong a neuron is, the more it will get updated. Finally, we update our weights and biases, and now we've completed our backpropagation function. This function called train is the main loop of our program. We're simply running feed forward and backpropagate hundreds or thousands of times until our network is finally tuned and ready to be used. We finally completed our neural network. As you can see, we're going to test it out with a simple problem called the XOR. Here we have our inputs. Here we've got our target outputs that we want to match. And we're setting up our neural network. We've given it two input layers, three hidden layers, and a final output layer. And we're also using the sigmoid activation function. We're training our network 10,000 times. And if it all goes well, it should predict our XOR problem perfectly. As you can see, we hit cargo run, and after an epoch of 10,000 times, our neural network is accurately predicting XOR. The best part of this is that we've done it all without using a single library, meaning it's all done from scratch. Anyways, as always, if you guys want to follow along, the code is all available on GitHub. I also want to take the time to shout out these amazing individuals who I learned so much from to be able to make this video. Please like and subscribe since these videos take over a hundred hours to make. Thanks for watching and remember, keep coding.